Hey, it's JB here again. Welcome back. Uh, I would like to say that I will be doing freestyles off the top of my head from time to time on these videos. So if you would like a freestyle done in your honor, all you need to do is an act of kindness to someone in need. Report it back here and I will be inspired. And when I'm inspired, I get on fire and I cannot stop rapping. I'm not a liar. This is just the way it goes. Let's see how it flows and let's get on to some physics. Sisters and bros, here we go. In this video, we're going to be talking about motion in one dimension. And specifically, we're going to be talking about uh, some of the variables of motion and some notation choices that we have. Uh, to start off, we'd like to talk about uh, how are we going to represent position. Position, where the object is at in space, we can represent with the symbol x or if you prefer, you can use d sub x. Uh, position uh, can be x or d sub x. Um, if you want to go get more specific, uh, we can look at initial position. Initial position, you would indicate as a couple different ways are possible, either x initial, or you could indicate it as x naught. Uh, meaning the position that happens at time equals zero. Uh, I'm going to prefer this one here, the x naught, simply because that is the format that the AP physics exam uses. Also, we can have stuff like final position. Now, you could express final position a couple different ways. One is you could say x final, if you like those letters indicating it, or uh, as the AP physics exam equation sheet does, they just will call it x. So if you just see x, that means x final. Uh, other variables include speed. Speed is given the symbol v. We've got velocity, v with a arrow over it. It's a vector. Average speed. V bar or V average. Uh, this is a little bit tricky because this bar, although it's used in most university textbooks, uh, kind of looks like a vector. So I may use this one from time to time because you can have an average velocity vector or an average velocity scalar, average speed that is. When you start getting into directions, uh, you've got to indicate two subscripts. For example, the initial horizontal speed Initial horizontal speed could be depicted by something like this. V, X, naught. So it's got two subscripts. Uh, of course, we could have the uh, final horizontal speed. And that would be V, X. Notice there's no needed subscript for final horizontal speed. Uh, we can, of course, have horizontal acceleration. And that would be depicted by A sub x. Now, you'll notice that we very often do not have initial or final for this. And that's because in most of our problems, acceleration will be constant. Although for the C kids, that is not always the case. So what would we do if we wanted to express vertical initial velocity symbolically? Well, vertical is the y direction, so our velocity symbol is v, and I will be explicit with the vector here. Uh, v in the y direction, not, meaning initial. Or you could, if you prefer, do the v, y initial, if you prefer that notation right there. Uh, how about Next, vertical final velocity. What would that look like? Well, we've got v again. It's again velocity. And it's final this time. So we could do no subscript and just do vy. That would be acceptable. Or if we want to be explicit about it, some people like to do this final. Both of these should have vector signs, by the way. v final y. 
a lot of times I'm just going to leave these uh, these arrows out. Um, those uh, sometimes it just takes too much time to draw on the arrows. So you have to be aware of the context, whether we're talking about uh, vector velocity or just the speed. For the acceleration due to gravity on Earth, for example, we're going to use the symbol G, and you can subscript it so we know what planet we're talking about here. G of Earth uh, is the symbol like that. It can have a vector symbol over it sometimes. Uh, we are going to actually use 10 for this, 10 meters per second squared on tests, because you can. On the AP exam, you can use 10 for G. Uh, on WebAssign uh, and labs, we're going to be using 9.8 meters per second squared uh, labs and WebAssign. Uh, and that's because all the textbook questions come pre-programmed with 9.8 meters per second squared being the acceleration of gravity. But on tests, again, you can use 10, and I highly recommend that you do because it's a lot easier. Let's go ahead and go to the next thing, which is the five kinematic equations. Uh, we're actually going to pick up on those in the next video, so I will see you then.